Hello there! So in this video, we are already on topic number 7. We will be discussing about rural banks, their organization, operations, functions, and services. Okay, so for the organization, operations, and functions of rural banks, we will be discussing the law itself. So we have here RA number 720. This is again the original and this was made in 1952. An act providing for the creation, organization, and operation of rural banks and for other purposes. Again, there have been amendments. We had a general banking law of 2000 and then there are other uh, newer regulations issued by the BSP and the Monetary Board. They may not be in the form of RA but uh, more like uh, BSP regulations, memo or something. Okay, so about rural banks, uh, short title, Rural Banks Act, Section 2, uh, Declaration of Policy, to promote and expand the rural economy in an orderly and effective manner by providing the people of the rural communities with the means of facilitating and improving their productive activities and to encourage cooperatives. Toward this end, the government shall encourage and assist in the establishment of a system of rural banks which will uh, place within easy reach and access of the people credit facilities on reasonable terms. The Department of Agriculture and Natural Resources, Department of Commerce and Industry, and other appropriate in agencies or instrumentalities of the government shall, in cooperation with the rural bank, provide advice on business and or farm management and proper use of credit for production and marketing. Okay, so just like trick banks, this uh, the rural banks operate on a smaller scale, more on municipalities or uh, several municipalities, if not uh, the provincial or regional level. Okay. And again, they are focusing on uh, the groups of people in municipalities wherein they don't have access to commercial or universal banks. Okay, so they're, uh, what do you call this? They are aiming to have at least strict banks or rural banks in this area that would help encourage people to save and would provide a capitalization or a source of financing for small businesses. Okay. Uh, we have here provide advice on business or farm management and proper use of credit for production and marketing. Okay. Section 3 In furtherance of this policy, the Monetary Board of the BSP shall formulate the necessary rules and regulations governing the establishment of and operation of rural banks for the purpose of providing adequate credit facilities to small farmers and merchants and to supervise the operation of such banks. So again, their focus is on uh, small farmers and merchants. Section 4. No rural bank shall be operated without the certificate of authority. So they should be registered first with the monetary board of the central bank. Rural banks shall be organized in the form of stock corporations. Majority of uh, banks and non bank financial institutions, they are in the form of corporations. Duly established. Cooperatives may uh, organize rural banks and or subscribe to the shares of any rural bank. At least 60% of the capital stack of any rural bank shall be owned and held by citizens of the Philippines. Okay. And then uh, provision on the said subscription, uh, how much should be paid, uh, basically the rules on corporation uh, establishment. Okay. And then you have your uh, bylaws articles of incorporation. Section 5, loans or advances extended by rural banks organized and operated under this act shall be primarily for the purpose of meeting the normal credit needs of any small farmer or farm family owning or cultivating in the aggregate not more than 50 hectares of land dedicated to agriculture production. A small merchant shall be one whose capital investment does not exceed 25,000 pesos. In the granting of loans, the rural bank shall give preference to the application of farmers whose cash requirements are small. Provided, however, that in the case of loans secured by real estate, no torrents title shall, shall be required. Okay? I'm not sure about this torrents. Anyway, again, their focus is on farmers and then they have small cash requirements. So basically, the loan amount is lower compared to commercial and universal banks. Section 6, with a view to ensuring balance, rural economic growth, and expansion, 
Rural banks may, within limits and conditions fixed by the Monetary Board, devote a portion of their loanable funds to meeting the normal credit needs of small business enterprises whose capital investment does not exceed 25,000 pesos and of the central rural enterprises or industries other than those which are strictly agricultural in nature. Alright, so again, this is in 1952-25,000. Purchasing power of money has changed, so basically, I'm sure uh, Monetary Board or the BSP have issued uh, new, uh, sorry, have issued amendments to these, uh, what do you call this, clauses. Again, they would have increased already the limits on this uh, amounts. Okay? Section 7 to provide supplemental capital to any rural bank until it has accumulated enough capital of its own or stimulate private investment in rural banks. The Rehabilitation Finance Corporation shall, upon certification of the Monetary Board of the existence of such need, subscribe to capital stock of any rural bank from time to time in an amount equal to but not exceeding the total in equity investment excuse me, of uh, the private shareholders. Provided, however, that shares of stock issued to the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation pursuant to this session may at any time be paid off at par and retired in whole or in whole or in part if, in the opinion of the Monetary Board, the real bank has accumulated enough capital strength to permit retirement of such shares. Okay, so basically, uh, since this is a rural bank, then they do not have, if they, in case they do not have enough capitalization because they are operating in a municipality with you know maybe smaller population and uh, the people are not yet used to saving their money so basically they would need a source of their funds as well so the rehabilitation finance corporation uh, in the beginning uh, in 1952 uh, they helped to fund these rural banks and then afterwards uh, when they have developed and they have seen a certain level of growth they have encouraged uh, the people to deposit their savings into the banks then the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation would then withdraw uh, the infused resources to this bank so in a way they help them uh, establish or begin their operations okay? and then afterwards when they can uh, walk on their own feet so to speak so they would now um, retract their own uh, investment Okay. Mm -hmm. What else? The Rehabilitation Finance Corporation authorized to obtain from the counterpart fund a special account authorized under Republic Act number 604 such amounts as it may acquire but not more than 10 million pesos for the purpose of subscribing to the shares of SAS of rural banks and of granting of loans to such banks as provided in Section 12 of this Act. All funds obtained by the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation from the uh, from the counterpart fund and special account shall constitute a revolving fund and together with the interest which will accrue thereon will be used solely as provided for in this section. Okay. Stock preferred uh, as to assets upon liquidation shall be issued only to represent the contributions to capital stock of the real bank by the government through the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation. Other things, power to supervise with the Monetary Board, Central Bank, okay. placing limits to the maximum credited allowed any individual borrower, in prescribing the interest rate, in determining the loan period and loan procedures, and in indicating the manner in which technical assistance shall be extended to rural banks, in imposing a uniform accounting system and manner of keeping the accounts and records of the rural banks in undertaking regular credit examination of the rural banks supervision regulation and in in instituting periodic surveys of loan and lending procedures audits test check of cash and other concessions of the rural banks in conducting training courses of personnel of rural banks and in general in supervising the business operation of the rural bank so basically um the monitoring process supervising processes really being taken seriously all right section 11 with the written formation of the monetary board of the central bank any rural bank rural bank may uh, offer the following services 
Accept savings and time deposits. Open current or checking account. The monetary board shall determine when a rural bank may be authorized to open current or checking accounts. Act as a correspondent for other financial institutions. Act as a collection agent. Rediscount with the Philippine National Bank or Rehabilitation Finance Corporation or other banks and their branches and agencies. The central bank shall specify the nature of paper deemed acceptable for rate discount as well as the rate discount rate to be charged by any of these institutions. Okay, and then this session through the Rehabilitation Finance Corporation. Mm -hmm. Capital requirement, pero mayroon ng bago ngayon. Assistance from the BSP. Okay. And then we have uh, fines for any misbehavior or what do you call this? Unauthorized transactions on officer, employee, or agent of the rural bank. And then any applicant for a loan from or borrower of a rural bank. So back then there are uh, penalties and consequences basically. Alright, so I think that's it. Uh, let's go back to the script, the other sections that we have to discuss. Alright, so we have here the capitalization for rural banks and co-op banks. Basically, they have the same uh, amount of minimum required capitalization. So, if their head office is in NCR, National Capital Region, head office only, 50 million. Up to 10 branches, 75 million, 11 to 100 branches, 100 million, more than 1,000 branches, 200 million, okay? Head office in all other areas outside uh, NCR, all cities up to the third class uh, municipalities, so if head office only, 20 million, up to 10 branches, 30 million, 11 to 100 branches, 40 million, more than 100 branches, 80 million. And then if the head office is uh, situated in 4th class to 6th class municipalities, so head office only, 10 million, up to 10 branches, 15 million, 11 to 100 branches, 20 million, and then if more than 100 branches, 40 million. Okay, so that's the minimum required capitalization for rural banks and co-op banks. All right, so for the services, uh, this would be the latest because the one we read earlier is the original from 1952. This one is uh, currently provided in the BSP website for their services uh, to be offered to the public. So rural banks, in addition to the powers provided in other laws, general banking law, uh, rural bank laws, an RB may perform any or all of the following services. Extend loans and advances primarily for the purpose of meeting the normal credit needs of farmers, fishermen, or farm families, as well as cooperatives, merchants, private, and public employees, okay, mainly in the municipality where they are located. Accept savings and time deposits. Act as correspondent of other financial institutions. Rediscount paper with the LBP, DBP, or any other bank, including its branches and agencies. Said bank shall specify the nature of paper deemed acceptable for rediscount as well as the rediscount rate to be charged by any of these banks. Act as a collection agent, you know, BIR, BOC, Municipal Treasury. Acquire readily marketable bonds and other debt securities. Offer other banking services as provided in Section 53 of RA number 8791. Later, we will also discuss this one. Uh, buy and sell foreign exchange with a prior approval of the monetary board and RB may perform any or all of the following services. Uh, accept current or checking accounts provided that such RB has net assets of at least 5 million. Accept negotiable order or withdrawal accounts, act as trustee over estates or properties of farmers and merchants, and then act as Official depository of municipal, city, or provincial funds in the municipality, city, or province where it is located if there is no GOCC bank in that area. Sell domestic drops and invest in allied undertakings. All right, so those are all the services that rural banks can offer. And then um, extra information, top 10 rural and cooperative banks in the Philippines. 
as of September 2017 article from doing business in the Philippines.com. Okay, so we have one network bank. I haven't heard of it. Okay, we have uh, East West Rural Bank. I've heard of it. Uh, basically, these are the assets in millions. In millions, we just add three zeros after, uh, sorry, six zeros after the decimal point. So this is in the millions, this is in the billion. Okay, so the top 10 rural and cooperative banks, they have uh, assets in billions. Okay, 28 billion, one network bank. East West, 22 billion. Card Bank, 11 billion. Guagua Rural Bank, 4 billion. First Isabella Cooperative Bank, 3.9 billion. GM Bank of Luzon, 3.4 billion. Quezon Capital Rural Bank, 3.4. And then Metro Solid Cooperative Bank, 3 billion. Bank of Florida, 2.9 billion. AMA Rural Bank, 2.7 million. All right. So that's it for this video. Topic number seven about rural banks. So that's it. Thanks and bye.